after a brutal three-day stretch that culminated in today's bloodbath, exactly how worried should we be about the epicenter stocks, the ones that are right in the middle of the COVID-19 blast radius. We already covered the airlines, did the cruise lines, the oils, the department stores. You know, I told you, stay away from all those. That's not a new theme. But what about an empower play like PVH Corp, high quality, parent of Tommy Hilfiger, Calvin Klein. Here's a stock that got obliterated in February and March. Sinky's low 28 bucks for rebounding to just under $70 earlier this week. Now, though, PVH is back down to 5272 and is looking a little bit weaker after the close. Fortunately, we know how this business is doing. Earlier tonight, PVH reported a major earnings miss on top of slightly weaker than expected sales, down 43% year over year. Of course, most of the stores that sell the merchandise were closed for six weeks of the quarter. So I, I, what the heck is a major miss? How can people not, believe, not know this? What really matters, though, is how the business looks now that the stores are reopening. So let's take a closer look with Manny Trico, the chairman and CEO of PVH Corp. Get a better read on the quarter and where his company's headed. Mr. Trico, welcome back to Bad Money. Thank you, Jim. Nice to be here. All right, so Manny, what... what I, Look, you know the analyst better than I do. You've been around forever. What did they expect? I mean, you have so many stores closed. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, to call it a major miss, which is what some of the analysts are, are telling me, is really to say that they're not doing their job, not you. Well, look, Jim, to be fair to everybody, it's, uh, it's, it's a very difficult time to make estimates when uh, even the companies are not, none of us are giving guidance. It's hard for them to figure out what's actually happening with the business. But in the second quarter, on average, our, our stores were closed for six weeks and our customers were closed for six weeks. That's about 45% of the business. And if you think about it, for about two or three of those weeks in that quarter, uh, we were being impacted by the pandemic uh, as people were readjusting their lives. So the only clean month we had was February And business was very strong coming out of the fourth quarter of last year. And the first month of February for us was very strong. And then we hit the wall in March, as as you just described. Uh, And we're just starting to reopen our stores now. But now it is true, though, the reopened stores are not, they're not putting up the numbers that you necessarily would like. Well, they're doing much better. Let's talk about it. They're doing much better than we would have expected. The stores have reopened. Uh, and globally, as our stores are reopening, pure brick and mortar, like for like stores and stores reopen, are down about 25%. And if you think about that, uh, our North America stores, if we, as we re- re- reopen them, are, do, are down 25%. In Europe, that's been opened a little bit more than uh, North America, our stores are down about 20%. And in Asia, our stores are down about 25%. And in China, our brick and mortar stores are flat at this point uh, for the second quarter. So we think um, that's, that's better than we anticipated uh, when you consider all things that we're dealing with and the pressure that, that we're seeing overall with the, with the closed stores. And uh, it's, I, I, I'm pretty happy with the way they've started to reopen. Keep in mind, a significant number of our stores, both here in the United States and internationally, are in significant tourist destination locations, like Orlando, Florida, Las Vegas here in the States, Guam in Asia, uh, Paris, Milan. There is no tourism in those those locations. They're dragging down a big piece of, of what we're seeing in our permanent population stores. So it's a mixed bag, but... We're pretty happy the way we've opened so far in our stores. Okay, so Manny, is it, given that uh, that you're somewhat happy, we don't necessarily have to expect anything uh, that is explosive. You're not going to call some of the department stores and say, from now on, we're going to change our model with you. Here's the way it's going to be. You're not going to go into the uh, the real estate investment trust that you're that you are uh, a lease a lease a lesser in and say we're not paying. Is it still business as usual on some of those bigger issues? Well, in, in this environment, there's no such thing, Jim, as business as usual. Okay. And let's talk about the let's talk about the wholesale channel, the yes. department store, and related channel. Is those stores in North America have been closed from eight to twelve weeks? Is go, is what it's going to be on? And look, on average, probably nine or ten weeks during the spring summer season, first quarter and second quarter, as they're starting as they've started to reopen. There's inventory in those stores that have built up. There's orders that have been canceled. So 
the stores don't necessarily need fresh goods at this moment. So the, the second, they're not pulling goods in the second quarter as quickly as you normally would have them pulling goods for the second quarter. Right. They've got to sell off what's been in the stores. And the last thing we want to do is stuff the channel. Okay. So we're managing goods. We're canceling goods. We're, we're repurposing goods and going to carry some goods that are fresh and basic and that we could re-merchandise and carry them for next spring. We're doing all the things you would expect us to do to manage uh, the flow of goods. And, but that's a big pressure that we're going to see in the second quarter and that we saw in the first quarter is that wholesale channel of distribution. But we've got to clean that channel up so that second half of the year, those goods start to flow again. The only goods that are really flowing right now is our basic stock replenishment, our underwear business in particular, which is very strong. Right. We're, we're, we're replenishing those goods as the consumer is pulling them out. And my understanding and what I see in going on in those stores, they're, they're tracking, they, they've talked about their own trends, but they're doing uh, better than they had anticipated as those stores started to reopen. Okay, but man, you know, I just hear everything you say. And I say to myself, it's a pandemic. It had nothing to do with you. But you decided to forgo your salary. Uh, why? You, not your fault. No, it's it's well, look. It, it's the right thing to do, Jim. Uh, fundamentally, myself, our, our senior management team, we forego our salaries. Uh, we'll reinstate them when the business is back to operating at a at a level that makes sense. I mean, people are working really hard, uh, so they they deserve to be paid. We have we have the financial wherewithal to pay people our balance sheet, our liquidity of. $1.8 billion. So it's not that we can't pay, but given the pain that our shareholders are feeling, uh, that that we're all feeling, had to, had to put people on furlough, reduce salaries for some, uh, reduce hours and salaries for some of our people throughout the world, especially here in North America. I think as a leader in, in the industry, as a leader for PVH, it was the right thing for me and my management team to do. And we, we were, we're, we're very supportive of the effort. You know, 2020 is is going to be a mess. Let, right. Let's just cut through all the BS. It is going to be a mess of a year. And the key for us is to get through this year, manage our cash, get through this year from a cash flow point of view in a good position, and be positioned from an inventory point of view, second half of this year and really into 2021, that competitively we can take advantage of this situation. We are going to come out much stronger than a lot of the people we compete with day in, day out. They're just not capitalized as well as us. They don't have the geographic and the brand diversity that we have to withstand the pain that everybody is going through. This is going to be a painful process for our industry. Our industry is, is under attack. And nobody's fault, but it's just the reality of the situation. But, uh, and it's not just painful, I know, in terms of business. Uh, you're taking part in the National Day of Mourning. Uh, you issued a statement uh, taking a stand against racism. Why is it necessary to do, do you think? Is it because is saying nothing means that you're part of the problem these days? I think that's right, Jim. I think is, you know, um, our country is basically being ripped apart by systemic racism, and it's resulting in too many instances of social injustice across the board. We, as a country as individuals and as a corporation, we need to do better. We are by no means perfect. We, have, we can do better. We have representation through all groups working at PVH, but we need to do better. We need to do better from a recruiting point of view. We need to do better from a training and development point of view. And most importantly, we need to do better when it comes to representation at leadership management positions throughout PVH. We are, we've embarked on a journey. It's not good, we, you know, I think you know me, it's, right. you know, talk is cheap. Right. But we've embarked on a journey that we're gonna, we're listening to our black associates. We're with our business resource group in PVH. We're, we're meeting with them to better understand the issues that they're impacted by. We have a numerous inclusion and diversity initiatives throughout PVH overall. That's always been an umbrella for us. But clearly, this needs to be a focus area as we focus on gender, as we, as we also focus on sexual orientation, 
but we need to also fo focus on racial ethnic ethnicity issues as well and get better representation in our executive ranks across the board. We can do better and we will do better. And over the next three months, we will come out with meaningful targets and we will account we will be accountable to ourselves and our stakeholders to meet those targets in the future. And it's not BS, Jim. I it's know what it we're really with you, we're really, it's what we're going to do and what we're going to put forth. We just need to do better. All right. I know it's not BS when it comes to you, Manny. It's not your world. And I want to thank you so much for coming on Mad Money. Uh, and uh, thank you for explaining the world to us in many different ways. It's always good to see you, sir. Take care, Jim. Good to see you. That's Manny Trico, Chairman and CEO of PBH. What you have to understand, if you're thinking of selling it, is you, should, you didn't listen close enough. He's the survivor in the group. Okay, so Mad Money's back yet for the break. I don't want you to miss my friend Scott Wapner, who's on later after the show on this special night. Here's a look at what he has on. Tonight at 7 p.m., a cautionary tale from the woman in charge of the Texas County that's becoming one of the nation's rapidly growing hotspots. Plus, concerns about a possible shortage of fruits and vegetables. We'll explain why. And Nashville's reopen hits a snag. What the city's task force chair is advising officials. All tonight at 7 p.m. with Scott Wapner. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.